Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Is there anybody in the building that has not been uh, hurt and hurt desperately in your life? Some of us have been hurt intentionally and other people have been hurt unintentionally. But the fact of the matter is, um, you're not going to get out of this life without some scars. You're not going to get out of this life without some deep and some very penetrating hurts. But now here's the deal. You don't have to hold on to it. Uh, you don't have to let it poison you and your life. Now, it's one thing to be hurt one time by somebody. But it's another to have somebody hurt you over and over and over. So what are you going to do about these repeat offenders who just seemingly, um, I don't know, have an in route into your heart and into your life that just sometimes devastates you and hurts you and cuts you to the bone? What are you going to do about them? Simon Peter went to the Lord and uh, he said, Lord, how often should I forgive my brother? And I, you know, something occurred to me uh, in preparation for today that I've never seen before. I, I had read that passage, uh, the Lord only knows how many times, and I'd never equated it as being Andrew. But it just kind of jumped out at me during this that could he have been talking about his own biological brother, Andrew? How often should I have forgiven him? I, 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 and by the way, I, when I read that, I thought, hmm. It is true that it is the people who are the closest to us that normally inflict the greatest of pain. Um, those that are in our families, those that may have been um, our best friends at one time, those that uh, have been so very close to you uh, in your family. Uh, somebody said to dwell above with the saints we love, well, that'll be glory. But to dwell below with those we know, well, that's another story. Um, the Jewish law said, uh, Simon, uh, you have to forgive um, your brother three times. So Simon goes to Jesus trying to impress Jesus. Now, I, we both know what the law says here. Um, so how many times should I forgive this guy? Seven times? You can just hear the smugness in Simon Peter as he's trying to be spiritual. And Jesus responds back, no, no. 70 times seven, you are to continually, over and over, repetitively forgive that person uh, that is constantly hurting you in your life. Matthew 18, and, and by the way, I, I am in the text this morning in uh, Matthew 6 and verse number 12, uh, forgive us our debts as we, here's the text, as we forgive our debtors. We're in the Lord's Prayer. For those of you that may not have been with us in these last few weeks. Uh, Matthew 18 tells a story about an old boy who owed the king 10,000 talents. That's a lot of money. You know how much money? If it were in today's currency, uh, it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of $12 million dollars. He owed the king $12 million. The king said to him, pay me what you owe me. Now, the fact of the matter is, <laughs> that is an impossible debt for somebody to pay back, even in today. <laughs> Couldn't pay that back. If that old boy had paid $100 a day, uh, it would have taken him nearly 300 years to pay back that kind of money. So it was an impossible debt. And, and he says, oh, king, oh, king, just... 
bear with me. Give me some patience and some, some time. And I promise you, I give you my word, I, I will pay every penny of that back. If you'll just be patient with me and if you will just show me a little mercy and grace here, I will pay you back. Well, the king saw something in him. Um, he, he saw maybe some legitimacy, I don't know. But the king said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to forgive you of every dime that you owe me. You don't owe me a thing. Now, why would the king do that? Why would he, in the face of such a tremendous debt, forgive this guy of all that kind of debt? I don't know why the king would do it, and that's really not the question. The real question is, why must we do it? The real question is, you've been hurt so deeply, you've been hurt so terribly, when everything in you and about you uh, wants to hold on to that, God says, I want you to forgive it. I want you to let it go. And he gives us, in Scripture, he gives us three reasons why that you ought to do it. So I hope you got a pen or a paper and maybe write this down. The first one is because of what you have received. Because of what you have received. The Bible is very clear, and we know this from experience. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of that sin, the debt for that sin is death. But the gift of God is uh, eternal life. And so we ought to be willing to forgive those who hurt us so deeply and so terribly because of the debt that God has forgiven us of. He has wiped that debt clean. He has given us a brand new start uh, and a new slate to live when it was a debt that we could have never, ever repaid. I shared with you a little bit last week. It's when we come to the place in our life that we agree with God about what God says about our sin and we go before God and we simply ask him to forgive us of our sin and we place our faith and our trust in him, it is at that very moment that God says, okay, your debt has been paid. You are forgiven. So it brings me to another question. If... Uh, Somebody had forgiven you of $12 million. Are y'all paying attention? How would it make you feel? We'd have been kicking up our heels, wouldn't we? We'd have been overjoyed with gratitude and thankfulness. Uh, we couldn't wait to spread the good news to everybody around us, but not this guy in Matthew 18. Do you know what he did? When the king forgave him of $12 million, he went out to an old boy who owed him, listen to this, $17. And in Jewish law, he was given permission to grab him by the throat and to choke him and to say to him, and he did, he said, pay me what you owe me. And if you don't pay me what you owe me, uh, I'm going to throw you uh, in jail. God couldn't pay me. He said, if you'll just be patient with me, if you'll just grant me a little bit of time, if you will uh, uh, show me a little mercy and grace, I, I'll, I'll pay you back. The guy says, no, I want my money and I want it right now. And he couldn't get his money, so he threw the guy in jail. Uh, why? Why, after being forgiven of $12 million, did he go out to an old boy who owed him $17 and treat him the way that he did? I want to tell you, listen, listen to this. Because he really didn't believe that the king had pardoned him. He thought in the back of his mind, you know, he, I know what he said, 
But I know what's coming down the pipe. He'll change his mind and he'll come after me and he'll throw me to the torturers. And, and, and I, I know what's coming. I, so he really didn't believe what the king had told him. He really didn't believe that he had been forgiven. He really didn't believe that the slate had been wiped clean. So he goes out, I better raise this money. I better get this money in hand because I know what's coming and I'm going to go get what everybody owes me because I know the king's going to be coming after me. Mm. Well, you understand he had no sense that he had been forgiven so he could not be forgiving. You see, if I'm unaware that I have been released from my sin, if I am unaware that Christ has cleaned me up of all my sin and mistakes, then I'm not going to release you. And the reason that we have a hard time forgiving other people is because we are having a hard time believing that God ever forgave us. Here's what I'm running into a lot in these days. I'm watching a lot of people who uh, say that they are Christians, that say that they've been forgiven, who will testify of a time in their life that they place their faith and their trust in Jesus, but right on the heels of that spend an enormous amount of time trying to repay God for the debt that they owe him. Maybe you're one of those people. They're saved on their way to heaven, no doubt about it, but they have the no, notion, something in the back of their mind, um, I, I've, got, I've got to pay God back. Well, let me just say to you, that's never going to happen because the debt is too great. The debt is too enormous. And the other thing about it is it's already forgiven. You can't pay back a debt that has been forgiven. So the word of God says that you and I are to be forgiving to others as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Now the second notion here is this. It's because of the torture of your resentment that you ought to be forgiving. Um, do you know that uh, unforgiveness hurts you more than the person that you are uh, uh, unforgiving of? What, whatever they did, listen, listen to this, listen to this. Whatever they did, they've moved on from it. They don't think about it. It never crosses their mind and whatever it is that is rolling over and over and over your mind about something that happened 10 years ago or 20 years ago or five years ago or last week and you keep rehearsing that, you're not hurting anybody but yourself because they don't even think about it. You're the only one that is holding on to it. You see, your past is in your past and it can't hurt you anymore unless you hold on to it. And one of the dumbest things that I'm watching people go through in their life today is that they won't let go of the past and they allow the past to invade their present. Job chapter 5, an unusual verse. And verse 2, to worry yourself to death with resentment is a foolish and a senseless thing to do. So the king finds out what this guy did. He is livid. He brings the old boy in and he says to him, listen to this, you contemptible and wicked servant, I forgave and released you and I counseled your great debt. Shouldn't you have shown mercy and release to your debtor just as I did with you? In wrath, the king sent him to the jailers to be tortured in the torture chamber. What's the point of all of this? The point is resentment is torture to the person who is holding on to the unforgiveness. It is a self-imposed prison that says, I'm going to hold on to this 
as long as I can. I am never going to let it go. I am never going to forgive it. I am never going to release it. May I say to you, it is like a cancer that is worse than the cancer um, that a person may have in their body because this kind of cancer will eat you alive. Do you know, that I, there are great studies out there, great, great studies done by some incredible people that say that resentment and unforgiveness leads to heart disease and diabetes and strokes that you wouldn't even have the danger of facing in your life if you didn't hang on to it. It's simply not worth it, ladies and gentlemen. And if there is something that we're carrying around in unforgiveness, let it go. Let the debtors go. Here's a fact. Here's a fact. Everybody has the capability of hurting you. You tracking with me? Say amen. So you got to learn to forgive. Let me give you the third. It's because I need forgiving regularly. I need forgiving regularly. Uh, I, I know me, okay? I know that God has forgiven me of the sins of my past. But I've got to learn to forgive those who have sinned and wronged me because I know down the road I'm going to mess up some more and I'm going to need forgiving down the road more. Amen? Forgive us our debts as we continually forgive those who have wronged us. So, God, I want you to treat me in the future the way that I'm treating people now in my present. Forgive me like I forgive others. So I know down the road I'm going to need that forgiveness. You've got to understand that this thing is a two-way street. It's me forgiving to get forgiven according to Scripture. I want to ask a couple of questions. And uh, I want you to really put your thinking cap on. You won't need to very long because the Holy Spirit of God is really going to convey it to you real quick. Um, who is it, you ready? Who is it in your life that you are really quick to blame for your problems? In other words, if it were not for them, you'd be happy. Somebody's name come to your mind? Second question I want to ask you. Think about what the greatest hurt that's ever happened to you in your life. Now when I asked that question, immediately somebody's name came to your mind. Here's something that I watch in people's marriages and destroys people's marriages probably as much as anything outside of finances that I know. A wife will see something in her husband that reminds her of her daddy and she takes it out on him for what her daddy did because she's never forgiven her daddy. She's never forgiven what he did or didn't do. Vice versa. Husband sees something in his wife that reminds him of his mother or some other person that hurt him deeply. And so, boy, they go at it just like that. And it's because this remembrance is out there. So if you want peace of mind, and how, is there anybody in the room that doesn't want peace of mind? Is there anybody in the room that doesn't want to experience the joy that Jesus has for us? Then release the hurt and let it go. Now, here, here are three ways that i got to go really quickly through this. Three ways to do that. Number one, relinquish your right to get even. Romans 12, 19, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I am the one that is going to repay those who deserve it. Uh, so you get to the point that you just simply say, okay, God, 
I'm done with this. I'm not going to hold on to this anymore. I've carried this around as long as I'm going to carry it around. And it's pretty obvious uh, that it's not doing anything but hurting me. And so, God, I'm going to relinquish my right to get even with that person. And you know how better to deal with this than I ever will. And so, God, please take this now from me and deal with it. By the way, God knows how to do with it a lot better than you'll ever will. And just let it go. Now, I do want to clarify something. Um, That doesn't mean that you have to trust them again. So so you you got an okay, if I let if I let this go, if I relinquish this then that means that I have to let them back into my life. It means that I have to trust them. No, no, no. No, no, no. Forgiveness and trust are two entirely different things. Forgiveness is given by grace. Trust has to be earned. And so if you have a husband that was a wife abuser, then then kick his sorry self out of the house. You don't deserve to be a punching bag for any man. But if he then comes back and says, please forgive me, can I get back into the house? That doesn't mean that you have to let him back in. He hasn't developed any kind of trust with you at all. And so those two things are just entirely different. All right? Now, number two is receive God's healing grace. Hebrews chapter 12, be careful that none of you fail to respond to the... Watch out. God's grace has come to you and make sure when you receive God's grace that you handle it in the proper fashion. Be careful that none of you fail to respond to the grace which God gives. For if he does, there can very easily spring up in him a bitter spirit which is not only bad in itself but can also poison the lives of many others. God says, Make sure the same grace that I give to you, you give to others. Because if you don't, this root of bitterness will spring up in your heart and it'll not only poison you, it will affect everybody else around you. How many of you grew up in a home that had a poisoned mom? How many of you grew up in a home that has a poisoned dad? Everything that came out of their mouth was negative and killing and poisoning. And it just affected all of the people in that family. And we'll do that until somebody in that family draws a line in the sand and says, this stops with me. It goes from one generation to another and to another and to another until somebody understands that the grace of God was extended to me and I've got to give it to other people. Here, here, well, I'm, I'm finding this out more and more and more. Life just isn't fair. The word of God never said that life was fair. Nowhere in the Bible does it say God is fair. And life, excuse me, that life is fair. We don't forgive because it's the fair thing to do. We forgive because it is the right thing to do. People have said hurtful things about me for years. People have written me some of the nastiest notes that you will ever see in all of your born days. I've gotten some emails that would stagger your imagination. And if I held on to that stuff, I'd be a miserable man. If I held on to that stuff, it'd be like a cancer that would have eaten me alive and I would be in some kind of self-imposed torture chamber. You understand, it is the grace of God that gives you forgiveness. We don't deserve it. By the way, let, let, let me help you understand something. There was nothing fair about Jesus going to the cross There was nothing fair about him becoming sin who knew no sin. There was nothing fair about them nailing those nails in his hands. There was nothing fair about him being beaten beyond human recognition. There was nothing fair about a crown of thorns thrust down on his head. There was nothing fair about a spear being in his side. There was nothing fair about him taking your place and my place on Calvary. Forgiveness is free. 
but it's not cheap. It cost Jesus his very life. And he hung there on that cross and he cried out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Let me give you the third thing is respond to the power of the cross. I'm going to make this statement. I think it's so very true. Everything you need in life, everything you need in life, just, just say that to yourself. Everything I need in life, everything I need in life, everything I need in life can be found in the power of the cross. When Jesus hung there, he broke the chains of darkness. He broke the chains of sin. He broke the bondages and the addictions of our life and the habits in our life. The power of the cross can change you. The word says we know that our old life died with Christ on the cross. But what does that mean? It means the very inclination that I have in my flesh to do the wrong thing in my life was nailed to the cross and died there. Everything. That, 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 old, that old feeling that we have, if you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. You do me wrong, I'm going to do you wrong. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hurt you deeper than you ever hurt me. The, the bondage of the slavery of the hurtful memories that we have in our life was nailed to the cross. How badly then do you want to be set free? How badly do you want to be released? How badly do you want that peace? I want you to stand with me, if you would now. And I want to lead us in a prayer time. As you're standing, here's what I want you to do. You ready? Look at me. Look at me. Go back and think about those names that hit your mind a little while ago when I talked about the hurts. Who came to your mind? Now let me pray for you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, only you know how much I've been hurt by these people. Pray this with me, will you? Just in your heart of hearts. God, only you know how I've been hurt by them. God, I don't want to carry the pain in my heart around for another minute. Release me from being a better person. God, I can't do it by myself. I need you. I need the power that kept you on that cross to help me let go of this hurt and to enable me to forgive those who hurt me. Some of you need to pray something like this. <clears throat> God, before I can forgive somebody else, I need to be forgiven myself. God, you know everything that I've ever done. You know everything that I've ever said. You know all of the hurt that I have inflicted on other people. God, I agree with you this morning that it is sin. Please forgive me. Thank you for taking my place on Calvary. And right now, I receive your grace. I receive your forgiveness. Help me to acknowledge that every day of my life. Right here at First Baptist Indian Trail. 
I am choosing to forgive others the same way that you forgive me. God, when my flesh or the enemy wants to drag that memory of the hurt back up in my mind, help me to forgive them afresh and anew. And realize that the pain is gone out of my life. Heal my heart with your special grace. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fbcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.